What's up my stats artists? In this video we're going to run through a one sample z test for population proportion but we're going to focus on the videos how we can use our calculator to do all of the heavy work for us especially on a multiple choice question where we just need to get the, the test statistic or the p-value. All right so let's first recap the four steps to a one sample z test. Step one we got to name the test, name the procedure is so important in context and create our null and alternative hypothesis. Then we got to check the conditions necessary for the test. Step three is the part that we're going to use our calculator for to find the test statistic and p-value. And step four is to make an appropriate conclusion. So here's the example we're going to take a look at. A recent study found in a medical journal says that 35% of adults have experienced depression sometime in their lives. David, the mayor of a large town of Vermont, believes that the residents in his town are much happier and, are, and less have felt depressed. He plans to sample a random 350 people from his town to hopefully prove it. He does select a sample of 350 random people, and 91 of them said yes, they have felt depressed. That is a sample proportion of 26%. Does this give significant evidence that his town is less depressed? Now, the one thing we typically we need to know here is what our significance level is going to be. We typically use 1 or 5%. Typically, on the AP test, they'll give you that value, whether they use an alpha level of 1% or 5%. But if it's not given, like technically it's not here, you actually can get to choose. Now, step one, naming the test. So important. This is a one sample Z test. Here comes the context for the proportion of adults that have been depressed in David's town. The null hypothesis is that the population proportion for his town is equal to 0.35. It's not any more nor less than what was true in that medical journal. And the alternative is what he's wondering or what he's claiming, and that is that the true proportion for his town, for the population of his town, is less than 35%. All right, step two is checking all those fun conditions. Not the purpose of this video, but hopefully everybody knows how to check those conditions. Not overly too difficult. And then now it comes time for the fun part. This is actually getting our test statistic, our z-score, based on that sampling distribution of sample proportions and getting our p-value. Now, for a lot of kids, this is going to be kind of sticky and kind of not fun, but this is where your calculator is going to come in handy because it can do everything for us. All we're going to do is hit stat. Slide over to test, and we have to find a one sample Z test. So we're going to keep scrolling here until we see a one proportion Z test right there, number five, one proportion Z test. Now, when you click on that, it's going to ask you for a couple things. First, it's going to want the null hypothesis. They call that P sub zero. What do we believe that null hypothesis to be? That's so important because you can't calculate a test statistic until you have that null value because that's the whole idea is you build a sampling distribution based on that null being true. So I'm going to put the 0 0.35 there because that's what the null hypothesis was. Now, X is the number of successes in your sample. Now, we actually saw that there were 91 people in his sample out of his sample size. And, you know, sometimes you forget these things, so don't forget to go back and read the problem to know what the sample size was. And that was where we saw that 350. Now, keep in mind, in this particular problem, they told us 91 out of 350, which we knew was that 26%. But if they just told you 26%, you would have to go ahead and take 26%, multiply it by 350 to get X, how many successes there were in the sample. If you ever get a decimal, just round the nearest whole number. Now, the next part's really important. What is the alternative? We want to show that our proportion, the true proportion, they could call it PROP, is less than the null. So we want to go down here and select less than. Now again, this is where you got to read the problem because it could be not equal to if David just wanted to see that his town was different or maybe his town was higher. But again, remember that P sub zero is the null hypothesis. And that was 35%. We're hoping to show that we are less than that. Then we're going to go ahead, doesn't matter what color you change it to, but we're going to go ahead and hit calculate here. And voila, look how awesome that is. They get the Z score, negative 3.53, and we get our P value. Just don't forget, we got to move that decimal four times to the left because of that E to the negative four scientific notation. So we get 0 0.0002077. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute, those values are a little bit different than what you got. That's because the calculator doesn't do any rounding. They're going to be way more accurate than what we would do by hand when we do a little bit of rounding. So again, that's it. And remember, to make the conclusion, the fourth step, all you need to know is that p-value with a p-value of 0 0.0002077. We're going to reject the null at any significance level, whether we use 1% or 5%. So I'm going to reject the null. There is strong statistically significant evidence that for his town, the proportion of adults that have experienced stress in their lives 
is less than 35%. He does have evidence that his alternative is true. But how cool is that? How simple is that that we can use our calculator to get that p-value? We're really going to come in handy on a multiple choice question. So instead of you doing all that work by hand, calculator can do it all for you. Just got to know how to use it.